To native Athabascans, Denali is simply referred to as the Tall One. To them, it's not just a mountain. It's a place of deep cultural and spiritual significance. They see it as a reflection of their connection with the environment and of a place that they've called home for thousands of years. Denali is the centerpiece of South Central Alaska, and it's easy to see why native Alaskans and others have such a reverence for it. It's the clear focal point in a landscape already dominated by large mountains. It immediately draws your eye when it comes into view and simply towers over everything else in sight. It can be hard to comprehend just how truly massive Denali is, but here are a few facts to help put it in perspective. Denali sits at 20,310 feet, or 6,190 meters above sea level. That makes it the highest point in all of North America and the third highest of the seven summits, but isn't even among the 100 highest mountains in the world. To understand why Denali is so striking though, we have to look at more than just elevation above sea level. Because while Denali might not be all that high compared to other mountains, it is very tall. To measure how tall a mountain is, you need to see how high above sea level its base is. In the case of Denali, its base sits only 2,000 feet above sea level, meaning that the mountain itself rises over 18,000 feet to its summit. For comparison, the base of Mount Everest starts off at over 14,000 feet before topping out around 29,000 feet, making Mount Everest around 15,000 feet tall, a full 3,000 feet shorter than Denali. But that isn't all. We can also look at topographic prominence, which is a measure of a mountain's summit relative to its surrounding landscape. Denali's prominence is 20,157 feet, making it the third most prominent peak in the world. There's also topographic isolation, which measures how far you have to travel to reach another point of equal or greater height. In the case of Denali, you'd have to travel 4,629 miles to the mountain of Yanamax in China to find a point higher than the summit of Denali. That makes it the third most isolated peak in the world as well. Even without these measures, we can just look at the mountains close to Denali to see how truly large it is. Mount Foraker is closest in elevation at 17,342 feet almost 3,000 feet shorter than Denali. But after that, only one mountain tops 14,000 feet. All of these facts and figures only serve to reinforce what we already know, that Denali is staggeringly large, especially compared to everything else around it. What they don't show though is why Denali is so tall. For that, we have to turn to geology because it's what's happening underneath the ground that explains why Denali rises so high above it. There are two main geologic factors at play here. The first is actually the Denali Fault itself. The Denali Fault arcs across central Alaska all the way from British Columbia in Canada, and actually forms the boundary where two continents come together. Those continents are the North American Tectonic Plate and the Pacific Tectonic Plate. These plates float on a layer of molten rock deep beneath the Earth's surface, called the mantle, and are pulled closer together through a series of currents in that rock. Because the Pacific Plate is actually more dense than the North American Plate, as they inch slowly together, the Pacific Plate slides underneath the North American Plate. When this happens, the Pacific Plate actually forces land on the surface to rise up, thus creating mountains. Now, this is all pretty standard stuff when it comes to mountain building and fault lines. You can find fault lines in all sorts of places where tectonic plates come together. And it isn't simply the presence of the Denali Fault that causes it to rise so high. For that, we need to look at the orientation of the fault itself. As I said, it arcs smoothly across South Central Alaska, but just north of Denali, the fault takes a rather abrupt 22 degree turn to the Southwest. The effect of this turn is to cause rocks to bunch up and essentially stack on top of one another, forcing Denali up higher than it otherwise would be. Basically, this bend exaggerates the normal mountain building process. Since a fault is where two continents come together, and mountains form on either side of where those continents collide, then a bend in that fault acts like a sort of pinch point. The mountains are trying to rise up, but the pinch point means there just isn't enough room, and so they stack on top of each other and grow much higher than areas along the fault that are smoother. Now, that bend in itself is enough to make Denali grow higher than the other mountains around it, but as it happens, there's another quirk of geology pushing Denali to even greater heights. And that has to do with Denali itself, its actual physical structure. See, Denali is primarily composed of granite, a type of igneous rock. 
Igneous rocks form when molten rock cools and solidifies. This can happen in two ways. Molten rock can be expelled to the surface by a volcano, where it then cools and forms land. Think of the Hawaiian Islands. But rock can also cool below the surface and force its way up already formed. This is known as plutonism, and this is exactly what happened to Denali. Essentially, a large mass of molten rock cooled beneath the Earth's surface, ultimately becoming solid granite. Because granite is not very dense, it rises up to the surface much more quickly than other rocks. From there, the process of mountain building takes over, and this giant chunk of granite is forced upward along with the other rocks that would ultimately become the Alaska Range. But that's still not all. Because Denali is made of granite, it's highly resistant to erosion. So while things like ice, wind, and water were slowly whittling away the other rocks around it, Denali stood tall, resisting those forces which sought to tear it down. To this day, Denali grows faster than it erodes away, rising about a half millimeter each and every year. And so, the reason Denali is so tall simply boils down to a couple of quirks of geology. A bend in a fault here and some weather-resistant rocks there have taken this otherwise normal mountain and thrust it nearly four miles into the sky. And while Denali's massive height may be relatively simple to explain, this mountain is anything but that. For thousands of years, Denali has been a cultural touchstone for native Athabascans. Visitors are constantly in awe of its grandeur. The geological wonders on display here are millions of years in the making, and while generations will come and go, Denali will remain, a granite sentinel keeping watch over the last frontier. If you want to learn more about the world's protected places, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me bring more park stories to more people. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye.